Hello. Oh, see, Ingrid just started already. Go Sevens. Go Sevens. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> We're back for another Shrinks Talk. Uh, to th this is the Enneagram 7 type, the adventurer. I'm here Woo with Ingrid <laughs> and Liz. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, she started already, y'all started already. So here we are. Welcome. How's everyone doing today? Great. Excellent. Excellent. All right, so let's get this started. Uh, tell me about the adventurer. Well, usually I've been starting these. You should go ahead. Okay. But I, I'm going to have to try to keep it sober. <laughs> <laughs> but just to start, um, I don't know if you introduced us, but Liz is a type 5 observer, I'm a type 7 adventurer, and Will is a type 7 adventurer, so we have two 7s on this video. And 7s have a, sort of a bias for happiness. Yes. They, they make everybody around them feel happy, and they... They look for possibilities and options. They don't like to sit still very much. I don't know how they've sat still for now six six types, and now they're starting on their sevens, but they've been sitting here still for all the time. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and they they do, people around them will feel happy when they're in their presence because they, this bias I told you about. And, and they, they like to if they like to have plans for things to do so that if something falls through that they were planning to do they'll have an option for something else to do because they don't want to waste a moment on boredom boredom is the devil yes. don't let me be bored for a minute preach right am i right guys yeah. yes yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> So, uh, what else? Uh, they like to tell stories. They like to be upbeat. They like to um, variety. Don't give them a job being on on an assembly line. <laughs> Curses! <laughs> That'd be the worst thing in the world. <laughs> they would like to uh, go from. They, they'd like to be like a butterfly, go from say, flower to flower to flower to flower, new flowers, all the time. Tasting new things, right? Mm -hmm. And they like to, they probably like to go out to dinner to a new restaurant every night. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and probably you guys could take it over from here and do <laughs> it That's a good intro. Yes. Angry. So, yeah, so let's talk about careers. Um, yes. So the seven adventurer, um, our greatest strengths have something to do with exploring possibilities. Mm. And, Will, I know you have a cool tagline, something about that you are the um, tour guide for the possibilities. Is that right? Yes. Yes. So um, we will start new ventures. We will... Be attracted to new fields. Um, a famous seven is Richard Branson. I think was he um, getting people to fly to the moon, or he's working know. on. He's working on it. Working on it. And um, because of the variety, we can be very good at multitasking. We can have jobs that have like many different aspects to them. Um, we're constantly networking, so social media is a nice channel for us for networking. Mm -hmm. Um. We're optimistic, so we can help others be optimistic about ideas and the outlook of things. And we like playfulness. It's got to be fun. So, But we can make the workplace playful. And sevens who I've worked with have just cracked me up and made it a joy to come to work because I'm laughing all the time in their presence. So, um, Yeah, so th those are our strengths. And so we're, since we're so upbeat, we tend to think that we're wonderful, so we might get on people's <laughs> nerves too. If people are not our type and they don't, you know, they're in a different um, thinking, you know, seeing the world in a different way. But 
<clears throat> oh yeah, I, I drove. My, I used to drive myself crazy because I was just so interested in everything in terms of careers. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. I want to do that. And I couldn't pick, you know, just one thing. And I just had to tell myself, you know, you you have to find a, a one career that has a lot of different possibilities and options and avenues. Uh, to it. I mean, I went to film school, so I mean, that, in, that, in that respect, you know, I could have made different types of movies. I didn't have to just make one type, but uh, you know, once I got into education, it was like, okay, well, I'm going to do this because I know everyone else had this, you know, one path, a straight path, and for me, it was like, I'm not. Str- I like to do all of this and and, and everything. And uh, I actually was talking to a girl I used to like back in undergrad, right? And I asked her, I said, why didn't you go out with me? You know, she told me because you didn't have focus. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't have focus. And I'm thinking, well, I didn't have focus. But, but, but see, I understand with my personality, you know, that's just one of the things. I mean, I, I'm not one of those people who has that focus. Though my dissertation, I've learned to sit down, you know, and write eight or nine hours because if I didn't do that, you know, I would never graduate. <laughs> You know, so it was some. You know, I had to learn. Uh, with our personalities, uh, Liz, how are we in relationships? Are we? Are, are we? Are we something people want to be around? Oh, people like being around you. Yeah, I like. I have a lot of seven friends. They're they're great. Seven's are great. <laughs> You're holding <laughs> back on the negative. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so I mean, it, in relationships, we're really fun, but then sometimes people get kind of get annoyed with us because we're um, we're not associated with commitment. Like th- we seem like we want to jump around, which is not true. Like I, Will Will is married. I'm married. Sevens do get married, but they're thought of as you know, like they don't want to settle down and they want to have fun all the time. Um, and we talk a lot. Mm-hmm. So it can be hard to get a word in edgewise that, with us. Okay, we, sometimes I mention negatives here just to try to, you know, be even things out a little bit. Some sevens never stop talking. Some <laughs> if you know somebody who never stops talking, chances are it might be seven. And that that's just an unhealthy seven. <laughs> <laughs> Not, neither one of you is guilty. I know Ingrid is not guilty. But I have known a few of these, and they turn out to be seven. But unhealthy seven. <laughs> <laughs> but Some sevens, again, are rather narcissistic. I have mm. known a few unhealthy sevens that really talk about them. They, don't, they might not talk too much, but when they do, sometimes they talk about themselves too much. And that's not fun. To be around those people, mm. just mm. Um, you know, it's good to know some of the pitfalls. Well, how, how do you how do you parent a a a seven child then? Well, you probably need a lot of energy. Mm. A seven child will be running from this thing to that thing to this toy to this game to this activity. And um, Liz, you had a seven. I child. have a seven child. Yeah, I I mean, he's grown up, but yeah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> he was in the mischief too. <laughs> oh my God! Breaking the rules, testing the boundaries, exploring yeah, he, the possibilities. He liked to he liked to be chased by kind of rough boys, and I'm worried about him. So that was like a <laughs> like a thrill for him. <laughs> that was scary. Riding motorcycles. He, and... he we forbid him to buy a motorcycle when he was 14. So what did he do? He bought one anyway and kept it at a neighbor's house where we couldn't see it. <laughs> he was sneaky. He was slippery. Seven little boys, sevens can be slippery. <laughs> they want what they want, and he want and he tortured us by asking for the motorcycle every minute. They they're relentless. Mm. They, yeah, they want stuff. Mm. My then, passion has always been movies. I mean, as a kid, I could just watch movies and TV, you know, all day and never get bored of it. I still don't. My even my, my wife was like, 
how do you do this all day? Well, that's why they're called gluttonous. Because they <laughs> like to watch movies, but they might like to eat, or they yes. might like to put put another uh, or spend time on Twitter. Yeah, some yes. ad. They might be an addict. Guilty. They have oh. A, a good, uh, temperament to be an addict, wouldn't they? Because they well, want what they want. Maybe. I mean, it's good for us to throw in a couple of the, you know, the downsides of stuff. Yeah, this is only the unhealthy but, um, side. I'm talking. About. In terms of the upsides, though, um, the upsides you are know, great. Sunny personalities, and mm -hmm. so in terms of career, mm. you know, sometimes on the team you need someone who's going to make things fun, who's going to have vision, who's going to want to push the group to try new things. You don't always need that, but certain teams you need that. Yeah. You, some places you need to be For innovating. Sure. And um, the CEOs who are sevens oftentimes are for startups or technology fields, for example, where you need somebody who's going to be trying something new. And um, and then if you want to you know, go on a great tour, like if you want a tour guide to help show you cool places to visit or travel, that might, person might be a seven. Um, a travel writer, yeah, would be an mm. ideal job for a seven. Most travel, travel writers might be, yeah, a lot of them are seven. Yeah, food writer, taste all the restaurants, and then write about it. That sounds like a great job to me. Uh, when you're working with a seven, um, how do you keep that seven focused? Because you know that. The minutia of the day-to-day -day sort of things is just—it's so boring. Yeah. How, how, how do you keep them them focused and and productive? Well, it kind of depends on who you're working with, but you know, you could either design their role so that they're not responsible for all the details, like maybe somebody else does finishes up some of the details, but they get a lot of it started and going and get the momentum and then someone else does the polish or you hold their feet to the fire and they're not going to like it but um, you know it's any seven it doesn't hurt I mean I I as a seven I lean on my six and my one so I can get very meticulous and um, but it's really more from other sides of my personality um, so, you know, I can complete things and get the details taken care of. So it's always nice to have build those skills up as well. Um, yeah, so you can kind of go either way depending on who you're working with. Is it better to hold them to the fire or mm -hmm. is it better to just not make that part of their role? Mm. That's good. That's good. And that's stuff that I had to deal with. Uh, I, I remember there was a time early in my dissertation where I told my mentor, I had, there was a deadline that was about a week away. <clears throat> and I told her, I said, well, I'll try to make the deadline. She said, no, Will, you're going to make the deadline. I was like, okay. <laughs> and so <laughs> I had to sit there and, and get it done. And so, uh, yeah, I need that. But I don't need the person to be, you know, overbearing with it. But I do need someone to say, okay, Will, we need to make this happen by this such and such day. Uh, because if not, I'm just chilling. I can waste the whole day watching, you know, seasons of TV shows on Netflix. I can just do it all day mm -hmm. and be really, really happy. <laughs> and my wife is like, no, you what? wasted a... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. My wife said, you, you, you wasted another day? I said, yeah, I did. But it wasn't wasteful to me. It was fun. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, sevens, we can tend to talk too much. So let's each give ourselves, we're each allowed to say one last thing. I'll say one thing, and then, Will, you can say one thing. And then we'll have to, sevens hate limits, but we'll give ourselves a limit. So Excellent. I'll say one thing is that a lot of sevens, they are good at networking and um, a, a skill that's sometimes called a woo which is kind of being out there at the front, shaking the hands, bringing people in. And so if you have someone, a seven, you know, put them in that role on your team. And there's one guy I'm thinking of, he's a head of product marketing, and he's the guy who's the champion, the enthusiast for the product. And he goes to the conferences, he gives the talks, he 
he stands in the booth and he talks to the analysts and tells everybody how wonderful it is and sometimes you need someone to play that role it, it can be a really important role and it brings in the business brings in the excitement for your company that's my one thing how about you well you can say anything <laughs> you Liz? <laughs> so I'll go last Liz, your one thing? Oh, for me. No. I think fine. Okay. Well, my last thing is goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, <laughs> Will. So we're going to end it like this. And uh, thanks for stopping by and tune in for the next one. All righty.